Okay, let's take a look at the sternum and the associated ribs, okay? First of all, the sternum is made up of three separate bones that are more or less fused to each other as we get older. This top bone, the most superior bone of the sternum, we refer to that as the manubrium. And really the only structure to mention, at least that we have on our list in lab, is this little chunk out up at top, that notch, and that's referred to as the jugular notch, which is palpable in yourself. If you kind of stick your finger in your Adam's apple and slide down until you hit bone, your finger will rest in that notch. Now from the, manu from the manubrium down, making up the bulk of the sternum, this area here is referred to as the body, or you'll also see it called the gladiolus, although body is much easier to spell. On the bottom, you have this little teeny tiny pointy tip, and that tip is referred to as your xiphoid process. Xiphoid with an X, not a Z, okay? Now, if you reference a torso or a picture in your lab book, you'll find just deep to the xiphoid process is where your liver sits. So back in the day when you took your CPR class, you would palpate the rib cage, you would go up to where the ribs stop, you'd go two finger widths, and then you would place your hand. And that was to avoid breaking off the xiphoid process and lacerating your liver. Now what you'll notice, along with the actual bony sternum, is we have these little plastic things that are mimicking our rib attachment, okay? We have 12 pair of ribs. And when we take a look at those ribs, we classify those 12 into three different classifications. The first seven ribs are considered true ribs. And they're true because they have their own attachment to the sternum. So if I count down and I find my first cartilage, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh, you'll notice that the first seven rib cartilages have their own independent attachment. So another name for the true ribs, the first seven, we could also call those ribs vertebro sternal because their attachments go from the vertebra directly to the sternum, albeit they have cartilage attachments. Now ribs eight through 12, collectively we call those ribs false, although we subdivide false ribs even a little bit more. If you look at my eighth, ninth, and 10th rib cartilages, 10, 9, 8 all fuse right here. And from here, they have a common cartilage that takes them into the sternum. Since 8, 9, and 10 don't have their own independent attachment, like 1 through 7, we call 8, 9, and 10 vertebrochondral because they go from vertebra to an independent uh, singular vertebral, I'm sorry, not vertebral, uh, rib cartilage, costal cartilage. So rib 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, true, or vertebrosternal, rib 8, 9, 10, false, but even better, we would call those ribs vertebrochondral. Now rib 11 and 12, you don't see attachments for taking a peek at this model here because rib 11 and 12 do not attach to the sternum in any way. So we call rib 11 and 12, they're still false, but better yet, we'll refer to those as floating ribs because they have no bony attachment, okay? The fancy word for rib 11 and 12 besides calling them floating would be just plain vertebral or vertebral ribs. So my three categories are vertebrosternal, vertebrochondral, and just plain vertebral. Now when I look at the rib itself, I've got this structure. And for lab purposes, you don't have to tell me what rib you're looking at. You don't have to tell me it's lab three or it's rib three or rib eight or rib nine or anything along those lines. But what I'll do when this is sitting on a table is I will tell you, assume this is rib number eight. What classification of rib would that be? And if I told you to assume this is rib eight, you would tell me that that's a vertebral chondral rib. Okay? So the features on the rib, I have the head of the rib. And the head of the rib now is going to attach to the body of the thoracic vertebra. Then I've got this little sticky up bump. And that little sticky up bump on the outside there, that's referred to as the tubercle of the rib. And the tubercle is going to attach to the transverse process of the thoracic spine. Between the head of the rib and the tubercle, I have an area that we refer to as the neck. I think you can visualize here pretty nicely where this rib takes a hard turn. We refer to this as the angle of the rib. And then by far the majority of the rib that I'm holding now is the body. So we have head, tubercle, neck in between, angle of the rib, and the majority is the body. And then if you recall here, as we take a look at the attachment, I bring in the thoracic spine. The head of the rib will go right into that 
costal facet on the body, the tubercle of the rib will go right into that transverse costal facet. And then, of course, they don't match each other because they're not from the same bone collection. But that is how the rib then is going to articulate. And then at the anterior aspect, of course, that's where it's going to go and attach to the costal cartilage. Okay? So there's an overview of the ribs and sternum.